Namaste, my brother and sister illustrator geeks. Namaste. And welcome to another exciting Illustrator Geek tutorial. I'm Mark Shears. I'm the Illustrator Geek. And today, Kaleidoscopes, part two. What I'm going to demonstrate today is a new and more sophisticated technique than what I showed in my first video. While it's harder to set up, you're going to see that it definitely has some advantages. Speaking of my first video, I don't know if you heard, but I've been given this Academy Award for my first video upload. Yes! I'd like to thank all the little people. I'd like to thank my mom and dad, and I'd like to thank all the people who believed in me, and I'd also like to thank the people at Brother Brand Color Printers. Yes, thank you. You like me. You really like me. So let's get started. Let's go over to our screen and we're in Adobe Illustrator. So let's go file new. And like last time in the first video, we're going to create a document that's 1080 pixels by 1080 pixels. Create that. A couple of preliminary steps I'm going to do is let's turn on our rulers. So view rulers. And I'm going to go over to the properties panel. I'm going to snap to pixels. I want that off. On this one, I'm going to click to unlock the guides so that I can draw a couple of guides. Whoops. Let's draw down the guide and draw a vertical guide. Being very sloppy because I know that in order to center the guides, all I have to do is select them both and go up to my control. I'm going to align both of these to the artboard, both vertically and horizontally. Now that they are centered, I will go back to my properties panel and I'm going to lock those. At this point, I'm going to do like I did in my first video, and that is to create a line using my line tool that's 800 pixels at 90 degrees. Hit OK. Just to make it more visible, let's apply color to that. So color, I'm just going to pick something rough, roughly. I don't need to worry too much about the exact color or anything. Now I'm going to copy this by selecting it with my black arrow using my rotate tool. I'll click 22.5 degrees, sorry, negative 22.5 degrees. Copy that. Back to my white arrow, which I access with my keyboard shortcut, uh, which is A, or up there. Okay, with the white arrow, I am selecting both of those. I'm going to go to Object Path Join. Then I'm going to select these two, uh, what's currently, it's one, one object, but it's an open path. I'm going to select it and again go Object Path Join to close my path. This is all things I did in the first video. Go back and review that if you want me to, if you want to see it a little bit slower than I'm doing it right now. Next step is I'm going to place an image. Um, sorry, I just used a keyboard shortcut. I should have used this so you can see what I'm doing. Place, which is Shift Command P. And I'm selecting an image called the Water Tower Place. I, I had to cut out for a second there. I made a mistake, but we're back. I placed my image. I'm going to drag my image below the triangle that I created. And the next step is, you're not going to know why we're doing this, but we're going to draw a really big circle. Um, let's go ahead and make it a color circle. Whoa, that is one bright color, but that's okay. That's actually a good thing. You'll see why later. Let's put that color below the triangle and the linked image and then the giant circle. I want to make sure this giant circle is exactly centered on my artboard, so I select it. And again, up on my control, uh, my, what's this called, the control window, the control bar, I'm going to select the two alignment options. I can also confirm this by clicking my object with my object selected. Over in the properties panel, you can see the X and Y coordinates are 540 pixels each, 
which is exactly half of 1080 pixels. And you can see it's referring to the center reference point and the center of the circle is at 540 and 540. Select everything and go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. Now, up to this point, this is mostly what we've been doing already in the previous video, but here's where things get a little bit different. What you're going to do is select this. Now go up to Object, Distort and Transform, select Transform. And within the Transform Effect window, do Reflect X. You can hit Preview to see what's going to happen. But we don't want to just reflect it, we actually want a copy. So here where you see Copies, select one copy, hit Enter. And you can see what's happening, it's automatically creating a copy. Now let's do the same thing, and I'm going to turn off my guides right now. I don't, we don't really need those anymore. Select your original object, and again, go up to Effect Transform, which it's here, or because you just used it, it's also available up top there. It's going to warn you, and you want to say yes, apply a new effect because we're going to double up on effects. This time, instead of reflecting X, turn that off, select angle 45 degrees. See what's happening there with one copy, two copies, three copies, four copies, five, six, seven copies. Hit OK. And you can see what happened. We've got two transformation effects. If we go to our appearance palette, it will show us, well, if we have it selected, our appearance palette, a palette will show us that we have two transformation effects. The first one, it's flipping it. The second, it's rotating it. I want to clean this up just a little bit before I show you the really cool stuff. You have a good idea. You know what? Let's save this a sec. Okay, that took a minute to save it. Um, just to clean things up, I'm going to draw a box, 1080 by 1080 pixels. I'm centering it on the artboard. Let's go into our appearance palette and say, no appearance, let's clear the appearance completely. And now, like we did in the last video, let's use this rectangle to create a layer-based clipping mask. And that's just going to clean everything up so we don't have to look at everything that's expanding outside the parameters of the art box. Here's where the magic happens. Since everything is happening automatically, watch what happens when I select the linked image and I'm going to turn off, I'm going to hide the edges now with the image selected, I'm going to go into the rotate field of the properties panel. I'm going to hit my up arrow on the keyboard and watch what happens. Ah. A little bit of a shift in the one in the one original thing that we made, it automatically filters down through everything else. So I can just keep hitting this shift button and every time I do, I get a whole new effect. And if I hit control shift, it'll go by increments of 10. Oh, okay. You see this? Do you recognize this color? Yeah, that's the color of our background box. And I'll show you what's happening there. Whoops. Let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah, what's happening is What's happening is this is the area of the linked box and you can see it's actually fallen off the edge of the, uh, the, the, the corner of the triangle. Let's move it back onto the triangle. There we go. I mean, you can see what's happening, right? As I'm rotating this, it's not fitting all the time. It's not fitting exactly onto the triangle. So if I move it up, it's off the triangle. I move it back on. That's why earlier I said it's okay that this background 
circle has such a crazy bright color because that way we can see when there's an error. Now I can rotate this thing. I could increase the size of it. Um, just increasing the size has weird effects as well. But anyway, the point is any manipulation I do to the linked image and only the linked image, right? I'm leaving the triangle alone and I'm leaving the circle alone. I'm only manipulating the linked image. And any manipulation I make to that, it's automatically filtering down to everything else. And you can just do all kinds of crazy stuff with that. So I don't know why this is so fun for me, but I tell you what, I just find it endlessly fascinating. Like the smallest change, you get this new, beautiful, new kaleidoscope effect, and you can just do all kinds of crazy things with it. Now here's one more thing I want to show you. Since it's only linked once, what happens if I relink to a different image? Let's go to the links panel and I've hit the relink button and let's just pick another image and you can see as soon as it relinked, it automatically updated, automatically did everything it needs to do. And here you can do the same thing. Start rotating, just do whatever. And gee, does this look familiar? Does this kind of look like uh, what you saw in the introduction of this video? Yeah. So yeah, it's a really cool new technique that you can use. Instead of creating every one manually, um, it's just an automatic way of creating these really cool kaleidoscopes. So thanks for watching the second ever Illustrator Geek tutorial video. Hit the subscribe thingy, smash the notification, whatever's. Join me, join my Illustrator Geek cult. Follow me on Instagram, I'm Illustrator Geek. Leave your comments below, your questions, observations, hints, tricks, wisecracks, or if you just wanna know where to send lots and lots of money. All right, enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, be safe, and go create some really cool art.